Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is BC joined by Alden Lawrence, the infamous Alden Lawrence here, Team BC University here, giving you guys another kind of objection handler video. This one is when you're meeting with somebody, right? Meaning you're about to close the deal. This could be a listing appointment for the realtors, anybody else selling anything where, you know, you have the contract in front of you, the order, whatever it is, you're about to ask them, okay, if you don't have any questions, let's go. And they hit you with the infamous, you know what, Alden? I want to think about it, right? And we're going to talk today about specifically what to say. So if you hear that all in a meeting, let's throw you the hot potato. If you hear, I want to think about it, what is the first thing that you do? Do you jump right into handling it? Do you like, well, what do you do? Yeah, the, the thing about I want to think about it is it's pretty much always a smoke screen. A lot of people um, at the meeting more so they just don't want to sign the paperwork. So the first thing I'm going to do, you have to because everybody's objection is going to be different is just get them to clarify. What is it specifically that you want to think about, Mr. Seller? And then let them respond because if you start, a lot of people in these types of situations would think about or, or smoke screen objections. We'll try to jump the gun and assume they already know what the person you know is going to say or, or what objection they're going to throw out there. And so you really have to hear from their words because if you can handle it from their perspective, it's going to be much more powerful than just assuming and then getting it wrong. And you're going to have a much higher percentage. So first thing I'm going to do is just clarify. Yeah, great. And I, I want to add to what Alden said. The, one of the first things I do when I have a meeting is I let people know, hey, the whole goal of tonight's meeting is to arrive at a yes or a no. Either one is fine. Cool. Now, that sounds like an innocent statement to people. And a lot of people don't have the confidence to say that at the beginning because <laughs> they're, they're, they're coming from scarcity and afraid of losing the deal. But when you do that, you set the frame and you set the tone and you will reduce the likelihood of hearing that. But even then, I could bring it up. But what he said is fantastic. You just want clarification. Now, whatever set after that, right? You guys have to make sure that after that, you isolate. Let's say they say, well, you know, really, Alden, it's the commission. Right. Uh, your fee is too high. Let's say the smoke screen is gone. He says the commission immediately. What people fail to do is isolate. Great. So it's just the commission. Is there anything else or is that really the only thing uh, stopping us from moving forward today? Oh, no, it's just the commission. Everything is great. You've effectively isolated. Now you handle the commission and you move forward. Right. So in your experience, Alden, when you talk with people and you drill with them, how many do you know for a fact are isolating and how many are forgetting to do that? Uh, I would say probably very few people isolate. Yeah. Is that absolutely. something that you learned early on or did you have to kind of pick that up as you went? Uh, do you mean the isolation? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I knew it, but I was, I mean, I'm guilty as everybody, right? I kind of neglect that isolation, uh, isolation until I started going on a lot more listing appointments and solely focusing on, okay, I want to build a listing based business. I started isolating. And what do you know? I started signing a lot more listings and my percentages went up. Why do you think people dance around this or just give up when someone says, I want to think about it? Because we gave the response, right? And now we can give the 20 different objections that they give after that, which we've made other videos. But why do you think people get so stuck on this? Is it they're afraid to, to is it like scarcity? Like, oh, well, if I poke at the beast, it's going to bite me type of thing. Yeah. And I, and I think because I experienced this myself for the longest time because I didn't come from a sales background. I think they believe it. <laughs> I think that when they believe when somebody says they want to think about it, because again, I was guilty of this, that they actually believe this person is going to go home and, you know, sit on <laughs> it and think on it for, you know, nights and, and weeks upon end. And then two weeks later, when they're on the mark with another person, they're like, you know, what happened? But, but I, I think the problem with these types of, of false time constraint objections is like people actually believe into what people are saying. Yeah, I agree, man. Let's take a look at it and analyze it. Think about what? What are they thinking about, right? And and, and there's many lines and many things yeah, that I yeah. say. I say, great, Mister Sell. Well, just so I'm I'm clear and and we leave no questions unanswered. You know what's really up in the air right now? Like, what are you thinking about? Is there any concerns, right? I kind of open it up like that, and I just start letting the floodgates open, and they and they can talk to me, right? And I yeah. tell them because the worst thing I want to do is for me to leave here and there's unanswered questions, and it sounds like there still is, isn't there? Okay, cool. Well, you know, there's something that we don't like, or, well, you know what? You brought up the price and this and that they will, right? So basically the whole point is you have to stick with it. Ask the next question, right? I know the one, I think this is a line I learned from Mike Ferry early on in one of his like scripts. He said, well, you know, two, two minds think better than one. Like, talk to me, what's going on here, right? Right. Or, Hey, up, up until now, has everything we've discussed or everything we've covered? Um, are you comfortable with it in, in that? Okay, great. So let's tie up some of the loose ends. What's going on? Anything like that. Basically, I'm saying present the next question and keep the conversation going. That way the presentation's not over because if you walk away, 
And it's, I want to think about it. How do you re-engage with someone who says they want to think about it? Hey, Alden, hey, I was there last week. You said you wanted to think about it. What's going on? They're going to be like, wait, who's this? Yeah, seriously. And the the interesting thing about that too is like, um, you're right. How do you re- I never even thought about it. How do you re-engage with those people? But it's very difficult. And so a lot of times, you know, I, I like to use a deduction approach personally. Um, yeah. But even, even to your point where you say keep the conversation going, you know, I'll usually ask them what I think it is after I try to get them to clarify and they won't tell you something like, well, is it, you know, maybe I can see the hesitation on the price of the house. Was it the price that we discussed? Do you not feel comfortable with the price? No, we like the price. Okay, cool. Well, you know, was it the commission? You know, uh, nah, you know, uh, we thought the commission was fair. Okay. I mean, there's really only thing one, uh, one thing left, or was it the marketing plan? Um, no, not the marketing plan. Uh, okay, Mr. Seller. I mean, do you have an issue with me? Have I been, you know, have I been a terrible <laughs> presenter here at the, the appointment? So, but just asking them, really trying to, to dig into their thought process. And if you label it, they'll acknowledge it. Yeah. And for those of you who heard him say the deduction approach, it's basically creating a frame, right? Where we say, hey, Mr. Seller, really it comes down to three things, right? If you've decided to sell the price and terms and then who you choose to represent you, would you agree with that? They say yes, they agree to the frame. Then we just go down all three. So have you decided to sell, right? Are we agreeing with the price and terms? And lastly, me, you want to kick me out or are you ready to move forward, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and that would be the a quick synopsis of the deduction approach. So uh, before we move on to the next one, Alden, anything else you want to add on this? Because basically my recommendation is ask the next question, keep the, the conversation open, and eventually the real objection is going to come out behind that smoke screen. Yeah, the, the biggest advice I would give people, and this is what I did early on, is like you have to, even when you get that, you have to just know that you have to stick in there. Because a lot of times I'll see an advice that I'll get, or not advice, but feedback I'll get from other people when on appointments that are asked, that'll ask me questions. They'll, you know, they'll never dig. They'll never sit in there and stick it out and continuously ask those questions to really dig out the real, the real response. So um, even if it's uncomfortable, stick it out and I can guarantee you it'll be worth it and you will absolutely get more appointments. Love it. All right, guys, all the resources you have are below. Distinguish Agent, the Agagi, right? All the courses and coaching and stuff that we have on sales, communication, persuasion, deep dive lectures on this stuff. Uh, appreciate all them coming on. We'll see you guys on the next Thank episode. You. All right. Peace.